guys and welcome back to my channel in my last video i explained how to draft a princess dad poster so in this video i'm going to be showing you guys how to cut and sew a princess dad poster gown so if you're interested just keep on watching i already cut the pattern on the fabric of camera and you can see the places where i added half of an inch sewing allowance so after cutting out on the fabric i notched my bust points because that's important to take note of and my yoke and center front is on fold while for the other parts of the fabric everything is just in two places and i went ahead to also cut this on my lining i will not be working with the lining yet so i'm just going to keep it aside and work on the main fabric it's important to pay attention to the way you place your pattern on your fabric when cutting. If you are paying attention, you'll notice that the way the Ankara design is on the pattern is well arranged. The first thing I want to do is pad the bustier. And to pad this, I'm going to use the lightest wording. I'm going to use two layers of this. The first layer is going to be cut exactly on the fabric from the chest line down to the waistline then the second layer will stop at the under bust then i'll make some trimmings at the side to make it look like a cup so after i've cut out this first layer i'll go ahead and place my pattern and make this to stop half of an inch below the under bust so i'm just cutting out what i'm going to need for the second layer before I cut out exactly on the fabric so after doing that i'm just going to cut exactly what i have on my fabric on the wording as well for the center of the bust yeah, i will not be making any adjustments but at the side i'm going to curve this a bit and take it to where the armhole curve starts from the idea behind this is that the wording is going to stop exactly where the bust stops when you put it on or your clients put it on so I'm going to cut this for the other side as well. So note that when you want to iron your wording to your fabric, it's the shining side of the wording that's going to face the fabric. You iron it down first, then you place the second layer on top of the first layer, making sure there's a shining side that's facing the first layer, and then you also iron it flat. And this is what I have after ironing everything down. Next thing I'm going to do is join the front piece together. So to join this together, I'm going to start from the edge and then pin this all the way to the chest line. It's important to notch your bust points when transferring pattern to fabric so that you can identify when the both sides are not aligning when trying to join the pieces together. So this is what it looks like after I've pinned it down. When you want to sew this down, make sure that it's this curvy side that is facing up so that when you are stitching it down if there's any part that is going to fold you'll be able to identify it for the back i'm also going to start pinning from the bottom and then pin this all the way to the armhole for both the lining and the fabric note that the same way i joined the fabric for the bust is the same way that i joined the lining so this is everything i've gone ahead to iron it down and open up all of the seams and now for this padded part, I'm going to just notch all of the points that I have joined together so that it can relax properly, especially the under bust area and the bust point area. At this point, I've joined the fabric and the lining together for both the front and the back of this bust here. So now what I want to show you guys is how I cut the skirts because I already cut the skirts down. I just had to show the video after showing you guys how I joined the bustier together. I'm going to cut directly on my fabric for the skirt and what I have here is on fold. This is for the front pattern. Before I start taking all of my measurements, I marked half of an inch at the top and that's going to be for joining the skirt to the bodies. Then I took my hip points, above knee points and full skirt length. After that, I use my ruler to draw a horizontal line from all of that point so that I can take my body measurements. All of the measurements I'm going to be using will be divided by 4. So I took my waist measurements and then I added 1 inch for that allowance. After that, I took my hip measurements at the hip point. So I'm going to use my curve ruler to connect from the waist down to the hip point. From the hip point, I will come down by 1.5 inch. From that point, I'm going to use the curviest part of my ruler 
to connect from that 1.5 inch back to the hip line whatever i have at my hips is what i'm going to take to my skirt length and then i'm going to connect everything down before i shape the skirt i want this skirt to be very fitted which is why i have the measurements of my above knee so i took the roundness of above my knee and whatever i have is what i'm going to put at the above knee point when you are taking the roundness of the above knee make sure that you or your clients can move your legs freely and it's not uncomfortable or too tight this skirt is going to be about four inches below my knee so i'm going to make the roundness of the skirt length to be one inch less than what i have at the above knee and i'm just going to connect everything together after that I'll add my 2 inch sewing allowance all round. So that's it for the front part of the skirt. I'm not going to mark the dart point here. At this point, I'm just demonstrating how to take in a dart for you guys to see. The dart usually stops 2 inches above the hip line. For the dart point, I'm going to mark that from the posterior so that the dart points will align when I join the up and the down of the dress together. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut everything out. While I was cutting the front pattern, I realized that I did not add hemming allowance to the bottom of the skirt. So I went ahead to add one inch to the length of the skirt and cut it out. So what I have for the front is what I'm going to cut for the back. It's not that complicated. The only difference is that I'm going to add zip allowance to the back. And the zip allowance that I'm going to be using for the back is two inches after i'm done cutting the skirt i'm going to mark the dart point to get the dart point i'm just going to fold the front into two and then i'll align this with the front part of the princess that bust here i'm also going to fold this into two as well so that joining between the center front and the side front is what i'm going to mark on the skirt and that is going to be where i'll take my dart from so that both sides will align when i join it together I'm also going to repeat this process for the lining because I'm going to take the dots for the fabric separate and for the lining separate. I'm going to repeat the same thing for the back of the skirt. So I aligned the back of the skirt with the back of the princess dot blouse and then I mark that joining point together to determine where I will place the dot. So I'm able to do this because these two inches are used for both the bodies and the skirt so it won't be that difficult to find the dot points. And also, I'm going to repeat the same thing for the lining. The next thing I'm going to do is shorten the lining for the skirt. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want the Ankara to also show a bit at the back of the skirt. So I'm going to cut off one inch. This is the idea behind it. If I cut off one inch from the lining, once I turn the lining with the hem of the skirt, about quarter or half of an inch is gone which means I have half of an inch left. Once I fold that in, that's going to be quarter of an inch at the front and quarter of an inch at the back. So the Ankara is not going to like be at the hem of the down of the skirt for both the back and the front part. Now, if you want like one inch to be showing at the back of the skirt, now it's one inch of the Ankara, you go ahead and cut off about two or two and a half inch from the lining. So now when you fold it in, you have more of the Ankara at the back of the skirt as well. So after shortening the lining for the skirt, I'll go ahead and turn the skirt with the lining. I'll face right sides together and then stitch the hem and the sides. Turn it out, then iron it. So back to the bodies of this dress, I'm going to go ahead and turn the back as well with the lining facing right sides together. Then I'll stitch down the neckline the side and the center back as well for both sides for the front parts of the bust here i'm also going to turn the lining and the main fabric but while i'm turning this i'm going to also go ahead and attach the yoke so i'm going to place the yoke in the center like this in between the lining and the fabric then pin everything down it's actually advisable to first of all fix the yoke to the main fabric before adding the lining because that center part of the yoke is usually a bit difficult to work with because of how curvy it is so when you are stitching you go ahead and stitch from the center front down to the side 
then from there you now stitch from the center front to the other side rather than starting from this side so you can see that i first of all attach the yoke before adding the lining so it will be easier for me to work with so after turning the skirt with the lining and the upper part of the dress as well with the lining the next thing that i'm going to do is join everything together so for this video i'm going to join the skirt separate and the bodies separate as well so what i'm just going to do is face right sides together and then i'll use the allowance that i added while cutting my fabric to join the both sides together I added two inches for my sewing allowance but i already used half inch to turn the fabric with the lining which leaves me with about 1.5 inch sewing allowance which i'm going to use to join both sides together before stitching it down i pinned everything and then used my chalk to mark out the 1.5 inch allowance so it will be easy to sew so this is what i have for the skirts and the bodies I'm going to go ahead and join this together. Something very important that you need to take note of when joining a bodice to a skirt is I have to mention that all of the points align. So the dart points and the joining at the side, everything has to align, which is why I notched the dart points from the bodies on the skirt. So now when I sew the darts for the skirt, and I want to join everything together, it will align. So when you are joining the bodies to the skirt, you are going to first of all pin all of that points together before you go ahead and pin the rest. So you can see that I'm starting from the front. I'm pinning the bust span area to the dart points on the skirt. Then I'll go ahead and also pin the sides and then pin the dart points for the back as well. Pinning this down shouldn't be too difficult if you took the same waist measurements for the skirt and for the bustier as well and also if you added the same allowance. So after pinning this down, I'm going to go ahead and stitch it down using the half inch sewing allowance that I added to the bodies and to the skirts. So this will give me my exact measurements once I'm done joining it together. So I've gone ahead to stitch this down on my sewing machine and this is what it looks like. The next thing I'm going to do is attach the zip. So I'm attaching the zip before I close the center back of this dress. And the kind of zip I'm using is a caterpillar zip that's open and closed. So I'll be able to stitch this one at a time. The method I usually follow to attach my zip is that I first of all use chalk to mark out the zip allowance. You can see that I've already marked out the zip allowance on this dress, which is 1.5 inch. After marking out the zip allowance, I will now pin the zip along that chalk line before stitching it down. So I've gone ahead to sew one side of the zip down. Now for the other side, I'm also going to use chalk to mark out the zip allowance and pin the zip down. Now one thing that you need to take note of is ensuring that the half length aligns that's the joining between the bodies and the skirts aligns so you're just going to pin the zip as well you check that the neck point aligns the half length aligns and the hem of the skirt aligns as well at this point you can see that i'm trying to make sure that the half length point aligns on both sides and i'm just going to use pin to secure that place very well so that it will not shift when I'm sewing it so I'm going to go ahead and attach the other side of the zipper and close the center back of the skirt as well leaving seven inch for my slits at the back so this is what the dress looks like I have not attached the sleeve yet I was just trying to do a fitting and it fits really well you can see the way I arranged the Ankara when cutting and it's looking really nice so what i'm going to do now is cut the sleeve i really thought i was recording here when i was drafting the sleeve pattern but turns out that it was not recording but what i have here is just a basic long sleeve pattern and i want this to have like a rough fold at the edge so after drafting out the complete long sleeve pattern i cut it off by four inches 
so it's from that point that i'm now going to cut the flare but i'm going to cut six inches for the flare instead of four inches so that it will be long past my waist by that two inches after cutting off the four inch i'll go ahead and cut out the rest of the sleeve and then transfer the pattern to my fabric i'm using the same lace i used for the yoke for the sleeve as well so i'm just going to fold the lace into four so i can cut out the two sleeves at the same time while cutting this out, I'll add half of an inch around the armhole area and then half of an inch at the hem of the sleeve. The half of an inch around the armhole is to join the sleeve to the dress and the half of an inch at the hem of this sleeve here is to join the flare to the sleeve. So I'm just going to cut this out. For the flared part of this sleeve, I just cut out a long strip of fabric that is about times three of my normal sleeve roundness measurements then i marked out the length i wanted so this is in two places because i want this to be in layers the first one is going to be the full length of the sleeve i ended up using about seven inches instead of six inches the other part of the gathers will be three inch shorter than the first here i'm just cutting this into two because this is for both sleeves so i'm going to cut out this one first after cutting and dividing it I'll place another fabric on top and then determine the length so I'll be able to make it shorter by that 3 inch that I want. So this is the two layers for the sleeve. I still cut that first layer to be a bit shorter. So the one that is longer will be the inner flare and the one that is short will be the one on top. So I'm going to go ahead and hem the edge of the both of them, then run a gather stitch on each one. So this is it. I've gone ahead to hem the edge. I'll run a gather stitch on it. When you want to run a gather stitch, make sure that this is at the lowest down to the bottom so that it will gather properly and it'll be able to drag the rope. So I'm going to head to gather both of them separately. If you do it together, it will be difficult to do. So after that, I'll stitch it down. I'll go ahead and top stitch it. I'll go ahead and stitch on it. And then add it to the hem of the sleeve. Okay. After adding it to the hem of the sleeve, I'll just close the edges. And the sleeve is ready. Go ahead and attach it to your dress. And... You have a really lovely dress to wear for sunday service so that is it for this video thank you guys so much for watching this far please don't forget to like comment and subscribe if you have any questions give them in the comment section and i'll make sure i respond to every comment that's to every question that you guys may have for me so thank you for watching once again and i'll see you guys in my next video bye